Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and I have a sew the look slash part two of the bamboo coat <laughs> um, video for you today. So um, I did want to cover a few things. So on last Friday I went through um, kind of the pieces I interfaced on this coat. Um, what else did I go through? Um, I did add the shoulder pads and the sleeve heads. I'm going to show you that in a second what those kind of look like um, in in place. Um, but the, actually, if you want to see, I didn't film how I did this coat, but it's the same way I did it on the sew along coat, which I believe is this Sunday's video. I'm almost positive it is. <laughs> I, I filmed it all. I just haven't edited and uploaded the, the last few videos. There's eight in total um, in this sew along. So anyway, you can definitely, it's the same process if you're interested in doing that in your um, own coat. Um, but then I did go through and what else did I show you last time? Quite a few other things. <laughs> kind of what everything looked like. Um, I did bound buttonholes. That's also part of the sew along if you're interested. But this week, um, I, I'm going to show you what it looks like. Oops, quit playing with that. <laughs> My lens cap. I'm going to show you what it looks like to have this, the shoulder pads and sleeve heads in, the difference that it makes once everything is sewn in. So I'm showing you with and without um, before I did the second set. Um, I also, this collar has a notched collar, a Revere notched collar, and I'm showing you how I sewed that as well. Hopefully you can see it okay. The um, interfacing I used on this coat is black, and so that does make it a little difficult, but hopefully it makes sense. So if it is something that, you know, maybe you would like to see as a standalone, you know, just how to do so a notched collar revere if this one doesn't make quite as much sense. Um, let me know and maybe I could do another one um, at some point this year. Um, but anyway, <laughs> uh, it's finished. So um, actually, you know what? We're going to pause right here. I'm going to first show you what that looks like on the inside of the coat with the difference in the shoulder and the sleeve heads. Okay, I just want to show you the difference in the shoulder pad sleeve head versus the non side. And I don't know if you can tell, but the um, right hand side or the left hand side when worn um, on this side has the shoulder pad and sleeve head in it, and this one doesn't. So let's take a close up look, and hopefully this fabric isn't too um, busy. But you can see how this sleeve is like folding in on itself basically there. Um, obviously this is a mannequin so she's got more squared off shoulders than probably off average people. <laughs> I think average person has a little bit more slope to their shoulders um, but it just kind of hangs. And then on this side over here I have a small shoulder pad, it's just a quarter of an inch um, but it just gives a nice shape through here, especially you would notice this on my body probably more than even on the mannequin. And then look how nicely the sleeve just like it's not falling in on itself. It's just kind of, you know, going over the arm. And if we open the coat, you can see there is my shoulder pad um, stitched in there and there's my sleeve head all stitched in there. Now the key, um, the key to stitching, and again, it's gonna be on the, I don't, yeah, it hasn't hit the sole along yet. That may be this week, <laughs> I can't remember. You may have already seen it by the time you're watching this video. Um, I just can't remember the order. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe it's next week. But um, the key there is just to keep your stitches when you're sewing your um, sleeve head and your shoulder pad in just very loose. Um, you're really just tacking it into place. You just don't want it moving around as you're wearing it, as it gets dry cleaned, all that kind of stuff. Um, but you don't want any puckers. So um, you just want to keep everything nice, loosey-goosey, um, with all of those running stitches to keep those in there. But yeah, we're making some progress. Okay, so as you can see, huge difference between having the shoulder pad and sleeve head, versus, sleeve head versus not. So I definitely would recommend it if you're going to be doing the coat as well. Um, yeah, I, I just think it makes a huge difference. I'm not because the the pattern was fantastic. The drafting was just perfect. The instructions were great on this coat. So I'm actually a little perplexed as to why she didn't add um, shoulder pads and sleeve heads into the coat because it is, you know, pretty tailored, even though it's oversized. Um, but anyway, everything else on this coat pattern was phenomenal. I will definitely be making another waffle pattern because it, I was very, very impressed. Um, okay, the Revere collar. I will, um, the notched collar, I will now pause and uh, go to that to show you how I constructed the notched collar on this coat. All right, so it's time for me to attach my lining to my coat um, at the notched collar area. So I'm gonna show you guys how I do that. All right, so basically at this point you have 
two coats. <laughs> you have your regular coat and you have your lining. And um, your under collar is sewn to the main coat. And if you look very carefully, you know, you've sewn it all the way around the back neck and you've stopped at the notch wherever, you know, there's sometimes a dot there at the lapel, um, there's a notch on this pattern, but basically it's the seam allowance, uh, which is half inch on this pattern, um, where you've stopped right in that corner on the under collar and then right at that spot there at the seam allowance. And I have clipped, as you can see, all the way around, um, it's identical on the other side, and pressed that seam open. This is gonna become very important um, once we have our lapel, or our collar and um, facing and all sewn together. Same thing for the, I'm going to show you a little bit better on the lining just because it's easier to see because I was using a different thread color to match my lining. Um, okay, so same thing, except the top collar is on this one. So the under collar is cut on the bias. This one's cut on, on straight of grain. So when it's worn, this is what's going to be on the top, which is why it's called the top collar. <laughs> oh, genius. All right, so the same thing, I have it um, sewn, I've got my seam allowances are free, and that's going to be important, we want to keep all these seam allowances free um, when we go to sew these things together, and um, yeah, and we'll be doing a lot of clipping to reduce bulk, so anyway, there is, um, you know, I've sewn right to that point, you can really see it right there, and I've clipped actually to that point as well, just to help everything really get nice and free so I can get in there. Uh, again, pressed that open all the way. And I also wanted to note, here you can see um, any place where there are seam allowances, I've cut at an angle um, those seam allowance bulk in, this seam, in the top seam allowance. So this seam allowance bulk where it's in the top there, I've cut those at an angle just to reduce bulk. That'll really help, especially if you're using a nice heavy wool. Um, there's the other one. So see how I've kind of cut those at an angle as best as I can, just to get as much bulk out of there as possible. And everything is pressed nice and open. Okay, you're gonna do this in two passes. So, um, you know, I never very, or very rarely, I shouldn't say never, I very rarely baste. However, if you're gonna baste, now is the time. Um, it just really helps to get this corner right here really precise. But we're gonna do this in two passes. We're gonna sew the collar in one pass. And then we're gonna sew actually three passes. Then we're gonna sew one side of the you know one side of the coat slash lapel facing area, and then the other side of that. So three separate passes um, there. So obviously we're gonna put things together right sides together. Mm. This is also where things get difficult because you just have a lot of bulk, <laughs> a lot of heft. You got all the structure built into the main part of the coat, and everything just gets really bulky. All right, so I'm gonna show you this on one side. So what we are doing is we are matching our collar up. And again, if you wanted to baste, now would be the time because we wanna start sewing right at that point where you stopped, and we need that to match up on both sides. So sometimes you have to scoot your um, seam allowances a little bit on the collar if they're not absolutely perfect, um, which none of us are, so that's okay. But I'm going to pop a pen right where that ended. It's just a lot of going back and forth. It's much harder to see the stitching on the side because I used a dark collar to match my but that is pretty darn close. Yep, that's pretty darn close. That's exciting. Okay, so now we're just gonna put a pin right in that. And when I'm sewing, I wanna push all of these seam allowances out of the way. I don't wanna catch any of those into my sewing. And then we're just gonna go around the collar and pin it into place. We're just messing with the collar right now. There should be some notches you can match especially because your under collar is on um, the bias. Sometimes that can easily get stretched. So you just wanna make sure that everything is lining up nicely. I actually am using pins here. 
All right, and then when we're over here on this side, again, we're just messing with the collar. Don't even worry about that lapel right now. But I just wanna make sure that right where I ended, which is right there, you can see the end of my stitching and that lighter colored thread. I'm just gonna pop a pin right through that and it wants to go right where I stopped stitching on the other side. Pull those seam allowances out of the way. Oh. Also really hard to do in a viewfinder. <laughs> Sorry, I may go out of frame here for a second, but I'm just trying to line those up as best I can. There we go. Also feels super bulky right there, but that's just because I have all of the seam allowances just pushed down. That will not be the case once we've sewn everything. Okay, that looks good. And then we're just gonna kinda pin everything else into place. Um, I also recommend sewing with the um, under collar on the bottom because it is on the bias, or it should be on the bias. Not all code patterns have you do that, but it should be. <laughs> um, so yeah, you just want to make sure that that's on the bottom because it'll be shiftier. So now we are just going to sew from one end of the collar all the way around to the other end. Very, very carefully. Also hoping you guys can see. I don't have any of my studio lights out. Using black um, may not be the best, but I just wanted to, I had many requests for how I do this. So I wanted to make this, that is not how I want to start. I just said I wanted the under collar on the bottom and now I'm trying to sew with it on the top. <clears throat> Again, a lot of bulk. Okay. So we're making sure that all of our seam allowances are out of the way. Oops, I need to change my thread too. Ooh, two six. <laughs> okay, sorry, I had to go back to my original thread color, which now that I'm thinking about it, this might be kind of hard to see. I apologize. But what I'm doing is I'm pushing all of these lapel pieces, all of the um, seam allowances, all pushing them away. Again, if you wanted to hand base this, that now would be a good time. Now it's kind of hard to get right in there just because there's so much bulk at the moment. Okay. Now this code has half inch seam allowance. So now I'm just going to go around the horn, slow on my curves. to the other side and once again we just want to make sure everything is out of the way all those seam allowances So now we just want to check and see how we did. We'll be 
coming at this from the other direction. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I think that side looks pretty good. So I'm just checking to make sure that mice didn't catch anything, number one, and that also my stitching matched up. So this is gonna be kind of hard to see. Um, but there is a, so I've started sewing here, but I stopped sewing here. So I have like a quarter of an inch gap there. That's gonna be a problematic. And to be honest, it's kind of the same here. <laughs> I think that's where I started and that's where it got really bulky. So I'm going to go back in. So sometimes that can happen um, where you start or stop just because of the nature of, you know, your presser foot having to have space and yada, yada, yada. So what I'm gonna do, and I honestly, I did get off my seam allowance a little bit there. So I'm just gonna pick arbitrarily a spot there on that seam line to start. Make sure that everything is out of my way under there. And I'm just going to sew that. There we go. So now it is connected on that side and also on that side. So I feel pretty good about that. Okay. Whew. Now what you want to do, um, and you can wait and do this at the end if you want to. Oh my gosh, look how, how did that slip so badly? Although that looks like it was cut weird, doesn't it? Hmm. Well, I'm going to need to sew that a little bit. <laughs> and you also want to make sure that your collars are matching up. And that doesn't really look like it slipped down. It looks like something got cut weird. Okay, I will fix that. But what you're going to do now is, um, actually, I may be okay. Um, so this is the under collar side. I can tell because this is on bias. Um, but you want to trim the under collar side. We're going to grade our seam allowances. So you want to trim the under collar side, just that seam allowance to half of its width and leave the, um, the top one, the top collar alone. So I'm going to really quickly do that. You just don't want all that bulk ending at the same time. I may go back and just re-sew that just a wee bit. Or if I'm top stitching, maybe it won't be as big of a deal. Um, the other thing that you can do at this stage before you do your um, lapels, my duck build scissors would actually be better for this, but I have up camera in my lap, so. <laughs> Um, is you can go ahead and put this on a pressing, um, a tailor's press, and press your seam allowance open around your collar. This would be an easier time than trying to do that once the lapels are sewn together. I'm going out of frame there. Just trimming that under collar seam in half. I'm trying not to cut things I don't want to cut. Because <laughs> we are going to go at that, that join where we join the collar and the lapel like crazy um, trimming out bulk. Okay, so I'm just really quickly going to go over to the um, ironing board and just press the seam open just to give it a nice crisp turn um, you know, as well as I can around these corners. And then we'll come back and we will do, um, I'll show you how to do one side and then the, obviously the other side's the same. So I'll be right back. Okay, so now that I've got that pressed open, here is the edge of the collar. I'm just gonna show you one side, it's the same on both. Um, so I've got that somewhat pressed open. I had a hard time getting into those curves, that's fine. 
Um, so now we have this seam pressed open. This is where the collar attaches to the body. And this seam pressed open where the collar attaches to the, well, body, and then this is the facing. Doesn't matter. They're both pressed open. <laughs> and this is pressed open. So now we want to start stitching. So again, we want to push this time all of our seam allowances up. And right where we stopped, which is... Can you see that stitch line? That's the lighter one right there. Um, we're gonna stitch from here all the way down the front of the coat. And in this pattern, um, the, fa it, the front of the coat has a jog there. So you end up stitching down and then over half inch seam allowance till the end of the facing, which is the hem of the regular coat. Um, I want to sew though with my facing on the top because it is um, completely interfaced. The front of the coat is only interfaced here at the top part. So if you notice you're getting like a, you know, cause sometimes things can stretch out, especially with wool and you know, this is kind of loosely woven. So just kind of see if you need to stop um, and then start with the other side on the bottom, you just want the side that seems longer against the feed dogs. Um, and typically that's the uninterfaced side. But if you get up to this point, um, where the front is also interfaced and it, you feel like you have extra facing, then you can stop, you know, backstitch and then flip it and just make sure your line leads up to that. So use your feed dogs to your advantage. So because I'm doing this side, um, I'm going to do the same thing though with my pens up here at the top. So I'm just going to make sure this is where everything can get very fiddly. So that's where that stitch line, you just want to make sure it's so easy to get a hole in your knot, the notch of your collar. I mean, it's easy to fix, but okay. So I just want to match those two up. And honestly, I kind of feel like it's easier coming into that point at the end than starting at that point. So on the other side, because um, obviously you'll be sewing that one from the top down in order to have your facing on the top it might be best to flip it for just a little bit and like maybe so from here around the corner to end up in that point. I just think that it's easier to be more accurate. Um, but that could also just be me. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna put a couple pins there. So I'm obviously starting at the hem on this side. Let me unfold everything. I had everything nicely pressed. And I can see my fold line there. Oh, wait. Hold on. That's more than half of an inch, but. I also have really bulky fabric. Okay, that should be. I'm also trying to match stripes as I go here because <laughs> I want my um, facing in the front of my coat to match up because obviously you see the facing when you get to the turn back part of the coat. So that's also why I'm going slow. And I'm treating this pattern as a stripe. Or a check, really. It could also be considered a check.
All right, here we come. Just like with the collar. We just want to make sure everything is pushed out of the way. Nothing's folded under. Because it gets really bulky. Okay. Let's see how we did. Maybe we did okay. I mean, the real trick is going to be when we actually um, turn it right side out. So let's move over here. Now, obviously, um, we haven't graded this seam allowance, and I'll talk about that in just a second. Just want to check, though, and make sure that I don't have a hole in my lapel. Because now's the time to fix that. Now, it's not going to pop out beautifully yet because we've not trimmed things. So it may pull and look a little funky. I just want to make sure I don't have a hole. And that looks really nice. I think we're good. So obviously you can tell, I mean, that looks really good. I don't have a hole there or anything. It looks really poofy at the moment. <laughs> That's okay. Um, it's not going to be pretty yet. So I'm very pleased. So my sewing re went really well on that side. So, obviously you're gonna go ahead and do the other side as well, but I'm gonna show you how to finish this off really quickly. Okay, here's the lapel. So you have a point um, right here actually, I've marked it with a little notch, that is the turn where the lapel turns on itself. So this is where um, you go from the facing being the right side to the coat being the right side. Um, and this is the case. So this is where it, it turns back. Um, so what you're going to do above this notch, you are going to trim your body of your coat by half. Okay. So I'm trimming the body of the coat by half at this point. Basically the, the, um, Seam allowance that faces the world <laughs> is the one you want to be the longer one when you're grading. And at the top part, that is the facing that faces the world when it gets turned over. I don't have huge seam allowances here, so this is all difficult. Okay, and then below that notch, we are going to trim the facing to half of its um, width, and then clip your corner down here, um, trim your, and continue trimming your facing to half its width down here um, at the hem. And then give everything a nice good press um, open, and then flip it right side out. But, hold on, but before we do that, <laughs> um, what you're gonna wanna do, all of this, this area right here where you have a ton of seam allowances coming in, you're gonna wanna be trimming out a lot of that bulk. And you'd be surprised what little clips here and there of just like excess seam allowance, just clipping a little bit of that out will do. Obviously don't clip anything you don't mean to clip. But just trim out your seam allowances down here. So this is where, you know, everything kind of meets the road here. Especially if you've got bulkier fabric like I do. Now this hasn't been pressed open yet, but just keep doing that and then keep flipping back and forth from the wrong side to the right side until you can get that um, bulk out of there. So now I'm going to do this to the other side. I'm gonna press everything open. I'm gonna finish trimming my seam allowances. And then I'm gonna come back here and show you how I um, fix my 
upper collar and outer collar together so that they don't get, you know, they stay together. So um, yeah, so I'm gonna do the other side of my coat, grade my seam allowances, and then press everything right sides out, and then I'm gonna show you how to finish off that collar. All right, so I have everything um, put together, and I just wanted to show you, this is that um, point that we clipped into and graded the difference, and you can see it's right at this point where um, this is the, the facing. Everything rolls to the facing side from the bottom of this, and then from the top, you can see where it switches, and then that seam line rolls to the coat side because when this is worn, that's right where that will flip open. And then of course, everything up here, you want that seam line rolling to the back. All right, so the last step here, I always put pins there too, just so I know when I'm pressing where to flip that. All right, so we're gonna go in between our layers. And we've got our collar pieces up here right at the neckline. Now we wanna keep these together. This is the facing, but here is my pressed open seam allowance of my upper collar. And this is the pressed open seam allowance of my under collar. So I just want to press those together. And I'm just gonna take some, some thread and do a really long running stitch and just attach these together, probably from shoulder seam to shoulder seam just along this section, this back section here. And that's gonna keep those collar pieces together so that they're not moving and um, you know your lining stays where it's supposed to. It's just, a, it really tacks things down. It's a, I would highly recommend doing this anytime you have um, an actual collar um, like that, okay? So again, just a long running stitch. Um, I'll do two layers of thread and I'm just gonna tack it right between those seams. Again, this is the back facing, but this is the seam where the back facing attaches to the top collar, and then this is the seam where the back of the coat attaches to the under collar. Okay, and there you have it. Um, after I've done this step, then I will go ahead and do my, I'm gonna go ahead and do my, um, the back part of my bound buttonholes. So the, um, that's where that kind of falls in the step. And again, I've got a complete sew along on that coming up, so stay tuned for that. Okay, guys. Okay. So there you have it. Once I've done that step, then I went through and finished the back of my bound buttonholes and then finished bagging out my lining. So here's my, why am I taking off the hanger? Here's my finished coat. So this is all part of a sew the look. So here's my finished coat. Oh, I also wanna talk about the buttons on this. So um, I've got my bound buttonholes. That's gonna be kinda of hard to see. Really proud of the, the plaid check matching, um, the bound buttonholes, and then the back, you know, it just looks really Nice, um, I love bound buttonholes. The lining worked out really well. Um, it, it does have a vent in the back of the coat, it's lined. I did hand stitch all of the vent. So the vent I hand stitched closed. Um, and actually I did not leave a place for me to turn my lining in the sleeve like I normally would for a bag lining. I just did all the pulling out through the vent. Vents are so hard to try and sew closed. It's just so much easier on a vent. <laughs> Just to hand sew the lining to the coat. It, it just is just so much easier. So, and it doesn't take very long. So that's, I did hand sewing there on the vent and then I also just did a little hand sewing here at the bottom of the coat just to kind of close that up. So when I was, um, I waited and hand sewed the back of my bound buttonhole, the little windows um, at the very end, even though they were already in place when I did all that. It didn't take me very long at all, um, but yes. It is a fantastic coat. Uh, and it's just like the inspiration picture. So here is the inspiration picture for this coat. Um, I loved everything about this outfit. I loved all the dark, kind of the monotone, not monotone, monochromatic look with the dark denim. Originally, I had thought this was a button up shirt that was underneath this with um, a pair of like straight leg jeans. But the closer I looked, it's actually a buttoned up jean jacket worn over jeans. And at first I'm like, well, I probably should style it that way because that's the way the inspiration picture is styled. And once I did that, um, and I'm the jean jacket I'm wearing is not, I have not made. It is a ready to wear jean jacket from J. Crew. It's a petite, and I bought that right before I started college. So that is from 1998. <laughs> I still have it. I go back and forth on when, in times in my life when I can wear it. Um, I can always wear it. Sometimes it's quite restrictive, definitely not buttoning. Um, other times in my life, like right now, 
I can button it right up. It's very comfortable to wear and I actually really kind of like it as a shirt. It, it, I never would have thought of that. So it was actually a lot of fun to kind of play around and pair this underneath this jacket. And then I've also paired it with my Liana stretch jeans, which are just a straight legged jean. I wish these were like an inch longer. And I think what happened is that I dry my jeans and they've just shrunk in the wash a little bit, just enough that they make them not too short really, but just a little bit. <laughs> If they were just an inch longer and I could totally drop the hem out and just do like a hem facing on the inside of those jeans and I may end up doing that um, just to solve that problem and then I think they'd be perfect but I really I mean I love these jeans so um, yes so that is what I've got paired with my bamboo coat and I think it really hits the nail on the head with the sew my style look um, sew my style sew the look look um, the original coat, I believe, was a J. Crew coat. Um, I pinned it quite a while ago. J. Crew really, back in the fall, knocked it out of the park with a lot of their coats. I had a lot of their coats pinned onto my Pinterest board of things I wanted to recreate, and I think this was one of them. I think. Um, but I think my fabric, obviously the cut, this is more orange with then a little bit of other colors in it. Obviously my coat reads a little more purple with the orange thrown in it, but I think it works out perfectly. Uh, the buttons I used, you saw in my, um, pattern and fabric and everything else haul on Tuesday, but there they are. There's my stri st variegated, the variegated, what are they called? Variegated button. I think those look fantastic. Um, I show you how to sew on buttons and create a thread shank and all of that. Also in the sew along, that'll be the last week though. So still a couple weeks to go on that one. There's only three buttons on the front of this jacket. It buttons up really nice. It is oversized, but I really like that. Um, I didn't change anything to the length of this. Uh, in fact, the only alteration, I talked about it last week that I had graded from a size 40 at the neck and collar and everything to a 44 through the arms eye and then did a 44 sleeve and the rest of the body a 44. Um, but other than that, I just shortened the sleeves by an inch and a half and it worked out really well. I've had a lot of questions about hems on coats. Interface those babies. If you interface your hems, they're gonna look great. <laughs> um, also, if you're having issues with them kind of coming down a little bit, hand sew. You just need to catch stitch those in place. I actually didn't do that on this jacket, and I thought about it later. I may regret that. I did catch stitch the sleeve hems, so they have been um, stitched up, so it's a blind stitch basically. But I was all up in my head doing, you know, trying to get everything through this vent that I totally forgot to do it on the body of the coat. So it could be after some wear that I start noticing the hem of this dipping just a little bit. And if so, I'll just have to go in through my hand sewing there through the vent and go in and actually hand tack that in. Not a huge deal, but um, something I'll just want to keep an eye on. Uh, again, I just was going forward and yeah, that happened. But anyway, there is my bamboo coat. So pleased, coat one for the coat month here in January. Um, the next coat, I don't think I'll be doing two parts on all the coats. The only reason I did um, kind of broke this up into more tutorials was really because it's similar to the coat I'm doing in the sew along right now, but there were a couple of different things that, um, that were different from the sew along coat, like the notched collar, um, and that kind of thing. So that is why I decided to do this kind of in two parts so it didn't get too long. Um, but for the other coats, I, th I think I may just kind of hit or miss, you know, take you, it'd be one video, but I'll kind of just hit on some highlights of things. Um, you know, for instance, the uh, moto jacket I'm planning on doing kind of that, that Vogue pattern with the pleather, the orange pleather. I can definitely talk more about sewing with leather and pleather and that kind of thing. Um, and then obviously show you the guts where I'm gonna interface that kind of stuff when I get to that point um, with all the jackets. But I I think the next one I'm going to be doing is um, Gertie's princess coat and I'm going to be doing it really more as like a blazer slash jacket because um, so I'm going to do the cropped peplum and make the matching skirt so that'll be another so the look that'll be coming up as well um, but yes I think that'll be the next coat I think I have four more coats to do this month <laughs> that I want to do that princess coat the moto jacket the bamboo coat with the other collar the orange one and then the houndstooth swing coat I'm really excited about that one too. That one may sneak up there. I'm very excited about making that and wearing that one. <laughs> So anyway, there you have it, my first coat of coat month. And um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you um, enjoyed the sew, the look. Um, I really have a fun time doing that, finding ready-to-wear items that I would buy uh, normally and then just recreating them because I, it, you know, I just think that's really fun creatively. 
So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this one. I hope you guys have a wonderful Friday. I will see you Sunday for, I think it's the sleeves this week for the coat. So we'll be sewing the sleeves and we'll be doing, putting them in, putting the sleeves into the coat and then doing all of the shoulder pads and shoulder heads. So even if you're not sewing this coat, if that's something, you know, you can always add that to any coat pattern. Um, so yeah, definitely want to have a look at the video sew along on Sunday for that. All right, that's all I've got. I'll be back on Tuesday with more coat sewing. Bye guys.